Greetings from Dr. Peter McLuhan, your host for another adventure in the life Jesus modeled. Our topic today is Zachariah and Elizabeth. Dr. Luke begins his gospel by saying that he interviewed many people who were eyewitnesses to the life and sayings of Jesus. After completing his research, Dr. Luke was moved by the Spirit of God to write down what he discovered for everyone to read. He begins his gospel with the story of an old priest by the name of Zechariah who had an encounter with the angel Gabriel. We learn that although Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth had prayed for children for many years, none had come. However, God was about to answer their prayer in an unusual way. Over many years, God had been preparing this godly couple for a unique role in the spiritual history of the world. Dr. Luke says, Zechariah and Elizabeth were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. Luke chapter 1 and verse 6. The godliness of this couple is reflected in their names. Elizabeth means God is an oath, and Zechariah's name means the Lord remembers. Indeed, the Lord remembered their prayers and was about to answer their prayer in a very public way. Before God introduces his next move, he raises up a father and a mother to nurture what he is about to birth. Zechariah and Elizabeth were chosen by God to bear a son who would announce to the world that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. At that time, this announcement was still 30 years away in the future. But in the meantime, there was much that Zechariah and Elizabeth needed to do to prepare the world for this great announcement. He was supposed to say, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. But because Zechariah could not speak, someone else had to give the blessing to end the sacrifice and release the people to go home. Now that evening, there must have been very fascinating conversation between the priests and Levites who kept watch over the gates of the temple all night. Zechariah was kept busy writing notes to answer questions about what it was like to be in the presence of Gabriel. He kept saying that he and Elizabeth would give birth to a son whom they were to call John. John would be the first person since King David to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. He would grow up to be a forerunner in the spirit of Elijah who would identify God's coming Messiah. Then Luke wrote, when Zechariah's time of service was ended, he went home. Luke chapter 1 and verse 23. You can be sure that news of what happened to Zechariah reached his town days before he did. When he arrived home, everyone wanted to hear Zechariah tell the story himself. Luke continues by saying, After these days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked upon me to take away my reproach from among the people. Luke chapter 1, verse 24 through 25. Eventually, the time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. And on the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child. And they would have called him Zachariah after his father. But his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. Luke chapter 1, verse 57 through 60. 
relatives and friends protested that the boy was going to be called John and not Zachariah, but the parents were determined to call him John. There are times when it is necessary to break with some traditions to connect with the next move of God. Zechariah asked for a writing tablet and wrote, His name is John. John means given by the Lord, and the Lord is gracious. Certainly the birth of John was a gracious gift, not only to Zechariah and to Elizabeth, but to the whole world. It is no surprise that all the people wondered. Great moves of God always call people to be amazed. The moment Zechariah named his son John, everyone was in for another surprise. Luke says, immediately Zechariah's mouth was opened and his tongue loosed and he spoke, blessing God. Luke chapter 1 verse 63 and 64. Next week, we'll learn more about Elizabeth as we continue studying the life Jesus modeled. Before I leave you, let me take a moment to pray for you. Sometimes when children are delayed in coming, it is because there is a high anointing upon their lives. If you've waited for children, God is using you to birth the next move of God through a special child that will come into your life. Several years ago, I prayed for a couple just like this who had waited for a long time, more than seven years, and then God gifted them with a son called Samuel Judah. I've held Samuel in my arms and prayed over him that God will use him in a mighty way as a forerunner for the coming of Jesus Christ. Perhaps there's an older couple who does not yet have children, and like this couple, you have been praying. I release to you an opening of your womb and the receiving of the gift of children be fruitful in the power of the Holy Spirit and bear forth children that will impact the world for Jesus. As we see in this story, muteness can be a sign from God, but sometimes muteness is also an attack from the enemy. If you have a child who for some reason is not speaking, I command that tongue to be loosed right now in the name of Jesus. Child, speak right now in the name of Jesus. If God has just touched your child, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. If you're having difficulty trusting Jesus, there's some transition going on in your life, I release to you an angelic encounter to help you understand the next move of God for your life. Father, reveal to men and women crying out to you for their next move, that they will flow in the purposes of the kingdom of God. Next week, we'll continue studying the life Jesus modeled.